John chapter number 2, for the sake of time, I want you to look at verse number 3. John chapter 2, verse number 3. The Bible said, And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. I'm interested in that first little phrase there in verse number 3. And when they wanted wine. And it makes sense to me this morning that if they wanted something, they had to have something. If they wanted more of it, if they wanted it again, if they wanted a refill, something had to be good the first time. And I want to preach this morning with the help of God on running out of wine. Running out of wine, we find in the Word of God, wine is a lot of pictures of a lot of things, but one of them is joy. Wine in the Bible represents joy. Can I say this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm seeing a lot of people today that are ran, they have not running out, they have ran out of joy. They've ran out. They've ran out about being happy about what God has done for them. I'm speaking that I know a lot of people today that you serve God and man, things come against you and you have to come serve God. I have to come to church and I have to be faithful to God. I have to come to choir practice. I have to teach Sunday school. And can I say this? If you keep that mentality, you will run out of joy real, real, real fast. Can I say this this morning? God does not have to have us do absolutely nothing. God could have marched a donkey here in this morning. He say, preacher, that's just crazy. You're crazy. Ask Peter. Ask, man, ask those guys in the Bible where that donkey turned around and talked to him. Here's what I'm telling you. God does not need us. He wants us. Can I say this? When your want, uh, want to becomes a have to, you probably don't need to. When your want to becomes a have to, you probably don't need to. Some of you know what it's like to be filled with the joy of the Lord. You remember when you first got saved? How many remember that? Well, I remember that Wednesday night. Man, I, I was crying like a little baby. My dad had a little chair over there in the choir. Well, I went and hopped in his lap as a 16-year-old young man. Well, I was crying my eyes out. I really, the next morning I woke up, y'all all felt, probably felt this way. I wanted to go charge hell with a water pistol. You know what I'm talking about. Boy, the joy that was overflowing. Boy, visitation come, preacher, I, I just wanted to be around visitation. Boy, they come cut the grass as a little kid. I just wanted to be around. I just wanted to be. Anything's happening in church. I wanted to be there. Why? Because the joy of the Lord was in my soul. You couldn't keep me away from the house of God. You couldn't keep me. You know why? Because the joy was bubbling up in my soul. And the sad reality is today, ladies and gentlemen, these kids, man, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm so proud of them. I'm ashamed of us adults. You know what has happened to us? They got joy in serving God. They got joy and we're sitting there. Well, there they go again. You know what I say? Let them go again. Yeah. Let them go the five times in the yeah. service. Let them go six times. Shame on us. You know why? You know why you get mad at that? Because that used to be you. That used to be you coming down and thanking God for what he's done in your heart. And now you've served God so long. Now you've served God so long and so hard that, that the joy of the Lord is ripped from your soul. Now you you wanted to, now you have to. Well, preacher, I, I, I have to go sing in the choir. Brother Doug's going to get on to me. I'll say this as much as I know that man of God. He'd rather five people get up here that want to than 400 that have to. Can I say, ladies and gentlemen, that they were running out of juice. Psalm 16, verse number 11 says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence 
His fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Psalms 32 verse number 11. Be glad in the Lord. Rejoice ye righteous and shout for joy. All ye that are upright in heart. Psalms 42 verse number 4. When I remembered these things. I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. And with a voice of joy and praise. With the multitude that kept the holy day. Boy, I like this. Happiness depends on happenings. Can I say things around us may, may happen and it may take your happy away. Can I say the devil may try to come. And some of you this morning, you know what it is to be full of joy. But now your happiness is gone. Happiness depends on happenings. My joy depends on Jesus. All hell could break loose in my life. The storms of life may come and it may wipe my smile off my face. Well, things in your family may not turn out the way you want them to be. But at the end of the day, Brother Aaron, I can still stand and preach and smile. Why? Because my happiness isn't based on the things around me. My happiness isn't based on if I got a lot of money. Somebody say amen. My happiness isn't based on if I live in a camper or if I live in a house. My happiness depends on Jesus. I'm glad though everything may crumble. No, people may walk out of your life you can still come to the house of God uh, and have joy serving God uh, it's a joy it's an honor it's a privilege to serve the king of kings and the lord of lords some of you have lost your joy due to circumstances the bible does say something like this the joy of the lord is higher you know why you're weak can't face nothing you lost your smile. I preached to people, I'm telling you honest before God, if I had time, I mean, just last year, I, I told Joe I surrendered. I honest before God had nothing, and I, I, I am nothing. Wait, honest, I'm not bragging today, but we've almost gone 26 weeks straight preaching somewhere every Sunday. I stand amazed at what God has done in our life. Not because I'm good, there's been problems happen, but I can still stand and smile and have joy, not because things around me, but because Jesus lives in my heart. Amen. They ran out of wine. Can I say number one? They Verse number three, they wasn't satisfied. They wasn't satisfied. These, this camp I went to last week, man, a bunch of kids. Boy, it was hot out there. Man, they, they were singing this. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Y'all know that song? Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. They go a little faster each time. They go, and I sat back, Brother Doug, and I looked at all them kids. Boy, they were excited. Brother Clint, boy, they were in it, man. They were right there in it. And I sit there and look at the adults. They were sitting on the back. Say, man, that's what adults do. And I looked at them. They were doing like this. Them kids, they don't got jobs. I'll say this, they deal with more stuff than they did when they're in school than you were in school. Right. Amen, amen. We've lost our joy. And can I say this? You can sit soaking sour if you choose you want to. There was a wedding. There was, man, they ran out. They was not satisfied without the joy. You know what the sad reality is? We get up here and sing and we're satisfied without the joy. We walk up here depressed. We sit in the choir. And boy, I saw, my brother Doug, you saw it too. What these kids singing, man, look what God has done. And we're all... <sighs> you know what that tells me? You're satisfied. Some of you this morning are jealous of these kids because they got what you used to have. You know what's happened? You ran out. You're satisfied without the joy. You come in service after service. Well, preacher, you don't know what's happened. Here's what I do know what's happened. You've lost your smile and your smile to serve. It is a miserable thing. You hear me this morning. It is a miserable thing to have to serve God. 
It is a miserable thing to have to get up in the pulpit and have to preach. It is a miserable thing to get up in the choir and I've got to sing. I have to sing or somebody's going to be mad. It is a miserable thing, Miss Renee and Daniel, to have to play the piano. Can I tell you something this morning? We don't have to do nothing. We all deserve hell today. We all deserve to be plunged into hell. It is not a drudgery. It is not a manner, well, I've got to do this or else. You should walk up here with the attitude. Boy, I'm thank God I get the opportunity to play the piano. Thank God I get to walk up here in the choir. I know I deserve hell, but I'm glad God lets me use my voice for the Lord. You don't have to do nothing this morning. We should want to serve God. You know why you don't want to? You're satisfied without joy. Some of you moms and dads, you used to be happy coming to, coming to church. Or preacher, we want to come to church. We want revival. We want camp meeting. We want all these things. But now life has you so bummed out that you've lost your joy. There was a wedding and then they run out. You know what they said? We want some more. Can I say it is a happy day in your life when you realize there's a problem and you realize there's a solution. Boy, one guy said this. I love this right here. A man used to visit a tiny general store in the country. The proprietor has a clerk named Jake who seemed to be the laziest man in the world. I know a lot of them. One day the man noticed that Jake was gone. He asked the proprietor, where's Jake? Oh, he retired, was the answer. Retired, then what are you going to do to fill his vacancy? The owner replied, Jake didn't leave no vacancy. That leads me to ask, what kind of vacancy would there be in this church if you left? Wow. You know why some of you don't care to miss and just it don't matter no more? You lost your joy. A preacher, I just, I, if I, I have to, my dad, man, it never ceased to fail. I don't know how your pastor does. Well, my dad, every Monday morning, y'all know this, Brother R.C., Miss Margaret, if y'all wasn't at church on Sunday, guess what? Monday morning, ring, 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 915, 1800's giving you a phone call. Can I say it's a crying shame when people don't have enough joy about them to come to serve God and they miss church, they don't care, you have things at the church, it's the last thing on your list, but let that alarm clock go off at 4.30, 5 o'clock, and you don't even have to have no bite. Folgers don't even have to wake you up. You're excited. You're more excited about that man carnal job than you are spiritual things. Can I say this, ladies and gentlemen? If you're having to do what you have to do because you have to instead of want to, you're going to lose joy. Well, preacher, I have to go back here and teach that Sunday school class. You don't have to do nothing. Well, preacher, I have to sing. I have to do this. I have. You don't have to do nothing. It's a happy day in your hour when your have to turns back to a want to. Amen. Psalms 10 verse 17, Lord, thou hast heard the desires of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. Psalms 145 verse number 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. Can I say this? Don't be satisfied without serving God with joy. I don't ever want to get in a pulpit and say, well, the Lord smote my heart on this. Well, I have to preach this morning or, or I have to do this. I don't have to. Can I say it is a privilege and it is an opportunity to wake up and to make, get in the word of God brother Phil I don't have to do this this morning God could have let a rooster walk in here if he wanted to God could have used anything he wanted to but God chose throughout the world to use man and I'm saying I'm glad he chose me I'm not the best I know I'm not the worst somebody say amen what I'm telling you is I want to have joy in the pulpit I want to mount this thing 
and say, God, if it had not been for you uh, dying on the cross, I want to have joy in serving God. Uh, I don't want this thing to become a drudgery. I don't want this thing to become a, well, I got to or else. I don't want to lose my joy. I don't want to be satisfied without joy in my heart serving God. So many people today are walking through the doors serving without joy. You know what the sad thing is? You're okay with that. You know why people burn out of the ministry? Because their want to becomes a have to. Don't be satisfied. May I say they wasn't satisfied. They were submissive. Look at verse number five. Dad used to quote this verse, I can't tell you how many times. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever, that's a, Paul's right here, time out. That's a big word. Whatsoever, he saith unto you, singular, singular, do it. Can I say they wasn't satisfied? They were submissive. You know why you don't have joy in serving God? You're not doing what he's told you to do. Amen. You know why we miss the joy of doing what, man, we used to love? It's because God has told us to do something and we were unwilling to follow his directions. Amen. Let me ask you this. What's that whatsoever in your life? That God has asked you to do, sir. And yet, well, this preacher, it's just crazy, it's small, it's big. It doesn't matter what it is. Whatsoever. Ah, preacher, it won't make much of a difference. Whatsoever. Yeah. Sir, that whatsoever might be the key that unlocks the door of heaven for your family. Right. That whatsoever might be what takes this church. You say, preacher, it's a good church. And I say, amen, right there. Me and my wife, man, if, boy, boy, if the Holy Ghost will let us, we come up here in a heartbeat. I mean that. I wouldn't say that everywhere. Boy, y'all got it going on. Man, I'd love to be a part of this place. But what would take us to a new level? What would take us to do more for God? You say, preacher, God's maxed out. God's been the roads done cut in. Preacher, we can't do much. Huh? Can I tell you, God don't need that road. God don't need the county he just needs his people to get back submitting to God uh, and saying God whatever you have me do I'm going to do it yeah. whatsoever yeah. not whatsoever the preacher asked right. whatsoever look there in your verse verse number 5 whatsoever he yeah. saith yep. Yep. can I say this this morning some of you have lost your joy because God's told you to do something and you were unwilling to do it some of you moms and dads are miserable seeing your kids in these altars because you know you've disobeyed God. Amen. You want your joy back? Start obeying God again. Amen. They were submissive. James 4, verse number 7, you know these verses. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Amen. One guy said, Charles Stanley, obey God and leave all the consequences to him. You do what God has told you to do and you leave the rest to him. Yeah. One guy said, when obedience to God contradicts what I think will give me pleasure, let me ask if I really love him. Wow. You know why somebody lost your joy back there in those rooms? My watch, man, everybody got up today and it was, it was like a wildfire. Whew, gone. There's teachers today, preacher, no doubt, that have walked in that room in front of those kids boy you used to be excited it used to be fun can I say this I'm not using that word loosely serving God is a blast I got a little man driving on the road and you think it's fun man I'll, I'll be honest with you he's a, he's a very good kid I could have got a whole lot worse somebody help me right there could act like his mama somebody say amen what I'm telling you is this it is a blast to serve the Lord you know why you don't enjoy serving no more? You're not submissive. Can I say these guys, the only way they were going to get wine is to realize they didn't have none. And to realize 
that whatever God tells them, they're going to have to do it. So many people miss out on the blessings of God and the joy of the Lord because they're unwilling to submit to God. It bothers me, preacher. It's bothered me all week. The fact of all these kids getting the altar. It's bothered me. I don't know if it's bothered. It's bother, I saw it. It's bothered me, Brother James, that all these kids will flood the altar. Submitting their lives to God. Telling God whatever. And us adults, we sit there. Okay. Well, there, there they go again. You used to do it. I used to come up here and we not even have opportunity to preach. You know why? Some of you used to have joy serving God. Amen. Now families left you, kids walked out, things have happened in your life and it's ripped the joy right from your soul. Can I say this? Don't expect joy to come back and serve in God until you are willing to submit to what God has you to do. Can I say, ladies and gentlemen, that verse number seven, God said, hey, I need you to go fill some water pots. Verse number six, and there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Those were Jesus. What's that whatsoever? Look at verse number seven. Jesus saith unto them. It was a precise thing. He said, fill the water pots with water. Well, I, I, I'm thankful for direction of God. Brother Donald, I'm thankful God. Brother Thad gives us exactly what we need to do. Every problem, he has a solution. Everything in our life, he is the answer to our problem. But can I say, Miss Sydney, what, what happened here, Brother Jordan, is those guys not only did what God wanted them to do. I love what the verse number said. We, let me, we miss this all the time, verse number seven. And they... Filled them to up to the brim. I love Toy Story. Anybody ever watch the movie Toy Story? Don't throw darts at me. Somebody help me. If you don't got a TV, I recommend you get one. Somebody help me. I ain't going to preach against them because I watch it. Somebody help me there. Peppa Pig and all that stuff. Whatever he wants to watch, that's what we watch. Amen right there. Well, I got Toy Story. And man, I'll never forget when old Woody and they brought out that brand new toy of Buzz Lightyear. He was always full of pride. Buzz Lightyear made me mad. Buzz Lightyear popped out of the box and he got the laser. And beep, 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 beep. He's trying to get everybody. Trying to hurt the very people who want to love him. Somebody help me. I ain't going to get into all that. I ain't going to get into all that. This is what Buzz Lightyear's theme was. To infinity and beyond. Preach, you know what the Holy Ghost showed me about that? He never reached infinity and beyond. But he'd sure try. He'd get on that race car. Boy, that, that little ramp would go up. And he'd, he'd act like, boy, them wings would pop out. He'd stick. Hey, man, I'm getting a lot of preach right there. Bro, my. Bro, Donald, he'd say, I'm going to infinity and beyond. He never made it, but he tried. You know what you need to do for God? You need to set yourselves away. No, listen, you may never make it to infinity and beyond, but oh dear God, uh, if somebody in the Emmanuel Baptist Church would set their wings out uh, and say, I'm going to purpose to make it to infinity and beyond, uh, I wonder what our churches would be uh, if we had some mamas to say, I'm going to go beyond. Uh, I'm going to be infinity and beyond. I wonder what your family was be like, sir. If your daddy said, I'm going to serve God. I may never make it to the top, but boy, I'm going to try. God said, go fill them pots with water. They went over and beyond. Oh my, I wonder what our services would be. Oh my, if y'all adults, if us would get what those kids have. You know what they're doing? They're trying to reach infinity and beyond. They may never make it. They're pretty close. Oh, God, help us to have some infinity and beyond, Christians. Not just come on Sunday morning and leave. Show up for Sunday school. Show up for 30 minutes for 20, 35 minutes before service. Hey Amen. Show up and give God everything you've got. Some of you lost your joy. 
Because you're willing just to do what God says at minimum. Okay, Lord, I'll do this. That's all I've got. It's amazing to me. God didn't say fill them up to the brim. He said fill them up. But you know what? They realized who was doing the talking. They realized, Brother Jordan, that, that God, Jesus himself, said, go fill them pots up, boys. You notice in the scripture, God didn't say how much. He said, fill them up. No doubt they could have carried those pots and said, well, Brother Tony, if I overflow those things, my, Brother David, Mr. R, see that, that water is going to overflow. I better not make no acts. They didn't care. Yeah. You know what they're doing? They said, boy, God asked us to do this. I'm going to give it all I've got. Yeah. And they filled it up to the brim. Oh, to God, if we had some moms and dads that would just fill it up to the brim on Saturday nights. Oh, my old man, what breaks my heart. God, boy, we go to churches and it's like funeral homes. You know what that lets me know? Nobody's willing to fill it to the brim. We're willing just to do this. Can I say what your pastor needs, what you need in this church? We need some almost to say, God, I'm going to fill it up to the brim. God, I know you asked me to do this, but I'm going to do more. We need some pawpaws to say, God, I just don't want to fill it up. I want it to overflow. Can I say we need some infinity and beyond, Christians? God said, fill it up. And they did. Y'all know that verse God is able to do exceedingly, yeah. abundantly, yeah. above. Right. Fill it up to the brim. Yeah. Preacher, I'm just serving here. Fill it up to the brim. Yeah. Preacher, I'm some more. I feel a preacher right here. Preacher, I'm in my Sunday school class. You know what I tell you? Fill it up to the brim. Yeah. You put two hours in a week, start giving four hours. Yeah. Fill it up to the brim. Hallelujah, what God would do with our families and our homes if we would fill it up to the brim. Amen. It costs something. You know why you don't have fill it up to the brim services? There's nobody's in the pews adding water. You know why you don't add water? You got no joy. They wasn't satisfied. They were submissive. Colossians 3, verse 22 and 23. Servants, obey in all things your masters. According to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord. Now, you know why those boys filled it up to the brim? It wasn't men doing talking. Some of you have been very lapsed in your serving God. You've only been giving God a quarter of a pot. You know why you can't be a blessing to nobody else? Your pot's empty. You know why those kids are starving and want to be around somebody else instead of you? Because somebody else, you know, man, I ask myself all the question, why, why, why all the time these kids don't want to stay at their own house and hang out with their own families? There's reasons why. Somebody help me there. I, you, you can get me afterward. There's reasons why. And I say when that little boy grows up and he's getting there very quick, boy, I don't want him. Brother Clinton to say, boy, I need to go out and hang out with somebody else. I always want to have a full brim. Boy, I always want to fill my pots with water. I want kids to want to come to my house. I want kids to want to be around me. I want mom and dads to want to be around me. I want to be one of those overflowing, filled to the brim type people in my preaching. I don't want just a quarter of a pot. I just don't want to do a half a pot. You say, preacher, why do you go all out? Because God went all out for me. I want my pot to overfill. I want to fill it to the brim and be an over and above beyond. God help us. Say, preacher, my Sunday school isn't growing like it should. How much are you putting into it? Preacher, I just don't know about this. You don't have to know. Start filling to the brim. They were, wasn't satisfied. They were submissive. I want you to look at verse number six and I'm done. Say, so, preacher, where did they go to get the pots? 
Preacher, how did they find their joy again? Brother Ray, how did they get their wine again? I say, Brother Thad, they didn't have to go to another city. They didn't have to, Brother James, go to another church. Somebody help me there. Well, preacher, I just, uh, I just, I just, I don't like it there no more. Your pot's full of everything else but God. I want you to notice where they got the refill at. Look at verse number six and I'm done. And there were set there. Can I say, ladies and gentlemen, they didn't have to go to Walmart. They didn't have it. Say amen. They didn't have to go to the club. They didn't have to go to hang out with the other best friends. You know how they got their joy back? They used the pots that were already there. You'll look in the word of God, you'll find those pots. At the end of verse number six, it said, for they were the washing and the purifying of the Jews. Everybody that come to that marriage, they had to stick their nasty hands in just to get cleaned up. You hear me now. You hear me, boy, this is good, Peter, if, even if I'm preaching it. Brother Doug, that every single pod had nasty, old, dirty, smug, dirt, man, just grime all in it. Brother Seth, look what God used. God didn't say, hey, take those things over there, throw a little dawn in them, wash them out real good. Somebody help me. I do that to the bottles sometime at home. Boy, them little bottles get stuff caked in them. And if you don't clean them out real good, my wife busts me, say amen. If you don't clean them out real good, it ends up causing a mess. But guess what God used? Hallelujah. Y'all ain't getting this. He used what was there. What was there? Just dirty. Oh boy, I feel the Holy Ghost. Just dirty old nasty water pots. Oh my. They wasn't shining. They wasn't the prettiest things there. Brother Aaron, God said, use what you got. You know what I find that God says we are. We're all nothing but filthy, rotten rags. Good for nothing to throw in the trash can. You know what I find out when my joy gets slow? I don't have to go everywhere else to find joy. No. I just come over here to Brother Donald. Just use old filthy rotten rags. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Can I say you don't got to go nowhere else to get your joy for this morning. Right. You got people in here who are nothing but dirty, filthy, rotten rags. We were all dirty and filthy before God come and find us. Huh? Can I say they use what they have? Uh, use what you got uh, you know what I'm telling you this morning we need each other we are the clay pots we realize we're nothing but dirt uh, and we're nasty oh my but if you ever get to the field to the brim the dirt ain't gonna matter no more hallelujah use what you got he said and there we're set right there you don't have to boy I feel the Holy Ghost you don't have to go to another church this morning to find joy you lost. Hallelujah. You don't got to go search for it nowhere else. Just start rubbing up on some old dirty water pots. Hallelujah. Oh my. Some of you this morning, you've lost your joy. Oh my. It almost hurts you to come to the house of God because you lost it. You don't got to go look nowhere else. Just use what's here. Give me this and I'm done. Moses had a rod. David had a sling. Samson had a bone. Eliezer had a sword. The lad had a lunch. The widow had a little. Joshua had a word. Boaz had a field. Ruth had handfuls. Job had ashes. Noah had wood. Elisha had a mantle. Hannah had a prayer. Abraham had an altar. And we have God and we have each other. You want your joy full this morning? Start rubbing on some old dirty water pots. I say this morning, preacher, you come. You know when somebody's lost their joy. Amen. Some of you this morning, you've not been able to smile all week long because you lost your joy. Can I say what you need to surround yourself with? Just, boy, I'm telling you, 
I wish I could preach another hour. You need to just start rubbing on some water, dirty old water pots. Can I say some of us that know that that know people's boy, I'm telling you, I feel a preach. Help me, Lord. Some of you that know there are people in this church that lost their joy. You know, it'd be good for us this morning just to go by. Just rub on old dirty water pot. Amen. Knowing we're nothing. We're nothing. But just a dirty old water pot. God help us to get our joy back. Father, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, I felt as if I've done exactly what you have us. God to serve you with joy. Lord, we love you. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.